Hi, I'm Rebecca Valcarcel. Let's talk about A Very Old Man with Enormous Wings, a short story by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. It's a very confusing story, and when we get to the end, we don't know that we've learned anything, or that any of the characters have learned anything. It's not certain whether this creature is actually an angel, Certainly he's not a Norwegian, which some of the villagers think but that doesn't make sense to us, but we're not sure even what to make of it anyway, even though we're so much wiser than these ignorant villagers who have all these crazy ideas, we're not much better off than they are. <laughs> so what is Marquez trying to say with this story? Well, some of the ambiguity may be the message itself, that we don't always know what to make of events in our lives. And they look like good things, but then maybe they're not so good. Or something that looks like trouble, ooh, a divorce, a breakup, turns out to be good. Oh, I build a new life and I'm happy. So part of it might be that we're not certain what is really happening in our lives and we're not actually um, able to get out of our own lives to have enough perspective to know whether an event is good or bad. We're not sure how to treat it, and perhaps we treat it badly <laughs> when it does come because we're not, we're not wise enough, really, to know how to treat these, these events that intrude on our lives. Another idea is that this, this very old man with enormous wings is the other or is the stranger, the person who comes into our circle from the outside, so an outsider. So think of any kind of outsider to a group, folks with disabilities, folks with sexual orientations different than our own, um, people who are from another religion. Any group might be the other for us, and upon that other we project all kinds of bad things. So this angel, if it is an angel, comes into their lives, and instead of being interested and curious, about this different person. No, they persecute it, they exploit it, and this poor creature is treated, cr treated cruelly. So perhaps we tend to do that ourselves with folks who are outside of our normal experience, and we try to impose on them what we think they should be, instead of appreciating who they actually are. Well, let's see, a third idea is that Marquez himself felt like this very old man with enormous wings as he was becoming a popular writer. He was making a name for himself and when he wrote this story he was pretty famous and celebrities always struggle with how their fame is affecting their lives, affecting their creativity and how they're received out there. So perhaps the writer feels like uh, an oddity like this very old man with enormous wings, a strange creature. He might be attacked. He might be put on a pedestal. People just can't react to him in the right way. And sort of like I said with the outsider, people don't appreciate him for who he really is. Instead, they make up all these expectations that they think he should reach. You ought to be like this. If you're a real angel, you should be white and you should have these magical powers and you should be strong and oh that's not what you got you know so maybe as a writer people were saying well wait if you're a famous writer we want you to do this and that and write like this and you should be a spokesperson for this cause or whatever expectations were pushed on him he had to say well wait a minute I'm gonna do my art and I want to do my work and even if they think I'm like this very old man with enormous wings and I'm I'm gross and I'm weird well, that's who I am. That's who I have to be. So that's another idea of how to interpret this story. Now, the story itself is rather strange because none of the people are nice. None of them are compassionate or humane. They all just exploit the very old man with enormous wings. They are in their little lives. They show a lot of ignorance in how they treat him and their ideas about him. Even the church, which might be a source of enlightenment, turns out just to be like more noise and red tape and doesn't have anything effective or constructive to contribute. And so I feel like maybe it's the reader who ends up growing and changing as we look at this story and we see what not to be. Like we don't want to be like those people because 
they have such a narrow perspective that they don't appreciate what they have. This fantabulous creature is there, but they don't really go to any trouble to learn more about him or or figure out what he is, except uh, with derision, with fear, with cruelty. They, uh, they simply say, well, you're not what we ordered. <laughs> if you're an angel, well, you're not the kind of angel we want to have. And they just overlook all of the interesting qualities about him. Now, he is smelly, he is uh, gross, he has bugs in his wings, and, mm, and he doesn't seem to engage with people or want to show and share at all. He pulls back. But um, after all, they did throw him in a chicken coop, so hey, it's not like he should be nice to these people. Even the child um, is treats him with indignities. We don't know what they are, but the child is not any more open-minded, really, than the adults. I feel like, as the reader, I'm supposed to not be like all those people. And instead, I'm supposed to realize that I should appreciate creatures and people for who they are instead of trying to impose my standards on them. And then I miss out uh, on this new interesting thing because I'm all boxed in. There's more to say as far as the style or the symbolism. We have the angel is associated with the sea, you know, comes in on the sea, leaves on a sea wind, sings these sailor songs called sea chanties. And the sea may always be a symbol of the the possibilities or the endless, boundless nature that is both cruel and giving. Um, if the angel is a gift from the sea, in a sense, then they reject the gift and they don't know what to do with the gift and it's very awkward. And finally, thank God, he's able to leave and kind of rescue himself. Did he actually cause the miracles? Well, the lady who says he's an angel doesn't have a lot of credibility because she says all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, but then the narrator tells us he's an angel and talks about lunar dust and some other things that imply that he really is an angel. So maybe the problem is that when God or the divine does erupt into our lives, we don't know what to make of it and how to treat it. And we don't even recognize it for what it is. He is mysterious. And maybe that's part of the message, that, that when the mysterious comes into our lives, we try to just explain it away, and we don't in, enjoy the, the deliciousness of something mysterious, something we don't understand. But we can certainly see that when faced with things we don't understand, human nature says, let's just, uh, <laughs> you know, be afraid of it, and let's stick it in the chicken coop. Maybe that's how we are with the mysterious in our lives and, and in the world. Well, here are some of my thoughts about this story. I hope you feel like you understand it a little better. I'm still pretty confused about it myself. I think being confused may be one of the things that Marquez is trying to do because when we're certain about things, we tend to get get it wrong. <laughs> so maybe being in confusion is is actually okay. Well, join me for another video next time. Bye.